first off, really love the film. And it's a cliche, but sometimes the location can be really the star or a big part of the actual project. Can you guys talk about the location and how it pretty much fed this narrative? It's almost a two-hander, but it's one of those rare two-handers that are very, thanks to the location, it's quite expansive. Can, so can you talk about shooting in that space? Yeah, for sure. First of all, thank you for saying nice things about the movie. That's really nice to hear. Yeah, we shot in a small town called Kanab, Utah, um, in a canyon that really was like pretty much exactly how I imagined it when I read the script, other than the fact that there was a way to drive in and out. It feels kind of miraculous that they found that location and made our job easier, I would say, in terms of the acting, not logistically, but the acting, I would say, it like lent something to the performances. What do you think, Scott? Yeah, I think that the minute, you know, I walked into that canyon that Barnaby found, I just felt there was a different energy there. You could feel the history. So much has happened on that land. Yeah. And it would be frightening to be just at such a massive natural set piece, if you will, that adds, it's, it is a character. It is like, it is Kate and I, but there's a huge, besides the rest of our cast, the canyon is definitely one of the largest characters in the movie, in my opinion. And for both of you, physically, just going out there in the elements, you're not actually right by the ocean or a nice hotel. It's just, you're right there in the thick of it. How much did you have to, both of you have to physically prepare just to maybe even get through the day? Yeah, I don't know that I was physically prepared for um, <laughs> very initial <laughs> how cold it would get at night sometimes, or, um, yeah, you know, this is uh, uh, nothing to complain about, certainly, but there was no cell phone service in the canyon. So it really was like a world unto itself. Once you drove off of the highway and into this um, canyon area, you were, you know, in, in the world of the movie, and there was kind of no going back, or at least it was... Uh, a pretty big ordeal to go back. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I don't know that I fully mentally prepared for um, the elements, I would say. But but it all worked out and everyone on set was so lovely and there was such good energy and good camaraderie. So even like the chilly nights were um, were fine and kind of fun. What do you think? Well, I think that... <laughs> <laughs> There was a lot of scenes where I was covered in a lot of blood or I was always sweaty or I was dirty. And and I remember we did, you know, it, it was the it was just very cold and we had to shoot for summer in the middle of freezing Utah. And it's all, that's just the beauty of movies and telling stories. You just you would never know that we were freezing yeah. our, our asses. Off. I kind of forgot that Scott was constantly being doused in some liquid or other. So, yeah, you had more of a. <laughs> tough situation than I did. Yeah, Scott, without giving too much away, th there are also very some claustrophobic elements regarding your character. Is that movie magic where you're only there just for a little bit? <laughs> because I, it was very tough to watch. And uh, you're there. How tough was it to shoot those scenes? Well, it was the, it was honestly one of the I, everybody, you know, we everybody says this when they do like press for films. They say it was the hardest shoot in the world. This one was it really was, in my opinion, like one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in my life. I, I, it was such a crazy confined space in there that it, you, you feel claustrophobic as it is. It would rain. You had to take this dirty, muddy road to get in there. We never know if we'd get out at night when it's raining. It was a whole adventure. It felt like we were also making some adventure movie that was the making of the movie to get to set all the crazy stuff that was happening. But it was, it was definitely difficult, but there's no complaints. Kate and I, I know Kate and I are both so grateful to be there. So that's why we're, we're cool with it. You know, I think what makes this movie really unique is you can watch it on a very fun entertainment level. If you're a fan of the genre, but then you might want to actually go back to it and pick out, pick apart some of the themes and the underlying stuff, the subtext, which is the most important part, in my opinion, of the seating. Is that one of the reasons why you guys wanted to be a part of this project, that it's more than just an entertainment genre film? Yeah, what, what do you think, Scott? Um, um, I, what, what I, I, I've always known Kate's work, like, and, I, and I knew that she was in it and that she was going to be my partner. And I really thought Barnaby wrote a great script for, you know, and I, I thought he just did such a good job directing. And it was just a project when I Zoomed with him. I instantly, you know, you never know what's going to happen in this business, but I just walked, got off that Zoom with Barnaby and said, I, I really hope I do this movie. That's a really special director. So I'm very fortunate to be part of his first film. 
feel the same way. I had a special feeling about it from the time I read the script and then finding out that Scott was, you know, the uh, going to play Stone. It was sort of a, a no brainer. All of the elements were lining up and Barnaby was from the beginning such a, you know, a wonderful person to work with. So it all felt, I felt lucky to be a part of it. So my final question is a two-parter. So can each of you name one of your all-time favorite films and what is it about this specific film that resonates with you? And the second part of that question is from your own resume, from your own body of work, can you recommend one of your own films or projects that you love that you feel is a little bit underrated and you want our listeners to check out? So those two questions and thank you for your time. Kate, yep. okay. you want me to go? Intimidating. Uh, <laughs> I'll start with a movie of mine that I have a great deal of love and affection for. Um, I've collaborated a number of times with a very close friend of mine, Amy Simetz. And the first feature that we did together was called Sun Don't Shine. And it we shot it, gosh, I, I think it came out in 2012. We shot it in 2011, but it still to me is uh, one of the movies that I'm most proud of. So I'll say that. And then God, to pick a favorite movie of all time, that's uh, that's a tough one. But I mean, let's keep it in the horror genre, I guess. Like, Don't Look Now, I guess, is uh, a big one for me in terms of creating atmosphere. And I feel like it shares some DNA with what Barnaby is trying to do in creating psychological horror where you're not entirely sure if what's happening is in the person's head or happening in reality, how much is... Uh, how much of the horror is their experience of something versus what is actually happening, I guess. Yeah, great choice. And Scott? I would have to say, movie-wise, I was just going to name a movie that I don't even know if people can find that meant a lot to me because it's hard to say my favorite movie. This is definitely not the, the best well-made movie of all time. It's, it's a documentary, actually, that Al Pacino directed that I watched when I was much younger and wanting to be an actor called Looking for Richard. It was about a bunch of actors coming together and doing Shakespeare. And it inspired me to move to LA, pursue this dream. And I built my own theater and had that dream come true based on that documentary I watched when I was like 15. Um, and the a movie that means the most to me isn't, isn't one I did as an actor. It's the documentary I directed called Mully, where this man has rescued 30,000 children. And he was an orphan who became a multimillionaire and decided to changed his ways and he said God spoke to him and he went out and started rescuing um, endangered, the women are endangered in Kenya and there's orphans and there's a lot of poverty and it's a really hard life in Kenya and he would rescue these children and he's gone on to do miraculous things and that's the project that I've seen actually really make a difference in the world and that that's cool to see you can create a piece of art that actually moves people's hearts and then they you know they go out and try to make the world a better place really love the film thank you guys for all the recommendations and take care thank oh, you thanks for talking to us